water was all the way to our waist. It wasn't a concern to anybody in Corpus Christi. It was weather just like this. Hurricanes are a part of our history. Corpus Christi is wiped off the face of the earth. From the devastation from Hurricane Celia. <laughs> That's one of the most horrific parts of these hurricanes is the sound they make. To the resilience of our neighbors after Hurricane Harvey. These stories shed light on our strength. In the unity of our people. To prepare your neighborhood this hurricane season. From Chris Six News. This is Plan, Prepare, Survive, a Chris Six News Hurricane Special, sponsored by Flint Hills Resources, Window World, and AEP Texas. Hi there, and thanks for joining us. I'm your tropical weather expert, meteorologist Stephanie Lauber. During the next half hour, the Chris Six weather team will bring you everything you need to know to plan for the upcoming hurricane season. By looking back at lessons learned, you and your family will be prepared for whatever may come our way. We break down the unknown so you can survive the stress of hurricane preparedness. Your neighborhood news reporters will join us momentarily. Joining me now, senior meteorologist Bill Alexander and meteorologist Julia Quady, Zuleika Soled, and Diamond Dixon. Let's begin with what to expect for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. This year, La Nina and hotter than normal sea surface temperatures are expected to give us one of the busiest seasons yet. Yeah, and that doesn't mean we'll get all the storms here. We could get zero here in the coastal bend, but we still need to be ready. Yeah. Now is the time to, to get prepared. It's a long hurricane season. Uh, just We've had plenty of years where we've had multiple hurricanes along the Texas coast in one season, and we're looking at a potentially active season across the Gulf and Atlantic Basin this year. So now's the time to get your plans in place. La Nina is a cooling of sea surface temperatures in the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. So how does that exactly affect us here in the coastal bend? Well, La Nina impacts weather all over the world. It enhances hurricane activity in the Atlantic Basin by reducing wind shear, which can tear storms apart. And researchers with the Colorado State University say probability of at least one named storm within 50 miles of Texas coast is 80%. While well, here in the coastal bend, that probability dropped to around 30 to 40%. Now, the chance of a named storm coming within 50 miles of New Essex County, that's a 38% chance. Overall, the numbers suggest that more likely we'll have to deal with a storm this season. The bottom line, you need to be prepared. If you've lived along the Gulf Coast for some time, you're probably familiar with the hurricane forecast cone. That's right. Here's a crash course for those of you who may have just moved here. The forecast cone shows where the center of the storm is likely headed. The cone will be a little bit different this hurricane season. Beginning in August, the cone will include more information about what impacts could be expected for those who are not only in, but near the storm's forecasted path. The National Hurricane Center will be able to give people more lead time to prepare, and they can even issue watches and warnings earlier. Also new this year, the National Hurricane Center will use AI to help translate hurricane products into Spanish. In the past, this has been done by a very small team of bilingual meteorologists within the National Weather Service. Did you know the National Hurricane Center assists countries all around the Atlantic Basin with hurricane forecasting? This includes countries where the predominant languages are Spanish and French. By using AI, the National Hurricane Center can communicate across those language barriers. When a storm moves into the Gulf, we're not the only ones monitoring it. That's right. Everyone in emergency management will keep a close watch and make a final decision about evacuation. Our Clara Benitez Cortez looks into what goes on behind the scenes. As hurricane season ramps up. This year we've hired a professional AV. Nueces County Emergency Management Coordinator D. Hawkins help us. is getting ready for potential disaster to strike. So whenever we know something is coming our way, then we have certain things in place through our emergency operations plans that we start uh, electing to, to make happen at that point. This is the Emergency Operations Center for Nueces County. As you can see, it's empty right now, but once there is a storm in the Gulf that converts into a hurricane, this location will be filled with people. 
typically there's four levels, uh, one being the highest, four being the lowest. Starting with level four, Hawkins says that is when the storm is five days away. At that point, they will reach out to the county's most vulnerable population to make sure they are prepared and ready to evacuate if needed. Level three, the storm is four days away. The county will activate the emergency operations center. It will monitor the storm and give real time information to leaders who may have to order an evacuation. Level two, leaders will decide what areas need to be evacuated. And level one, alert residents the storm is coming and advise them to get out. So as the entire region prepares for hurricane season this year, Hawkins says the coastal bend is in great hands. Whether it happens in Corpus Christi or if it happens in Port Aransas or wherever, we come together to make sure that everybody is safe and has, has everything that they need to recover. Reporting in Nueces County, Clara Benitez Cortez, Chris 6 News. And Clara sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Nueces County Judge Connie Scott about preparing the county for the next storm. You can catch the full interview on ChrisTV.com slash hurricane. When a hurricane or tropical storm makes landfall, it's armed with a variety of weapons. For example, extreme winds or even tornadoes. There's another weapon in a tropical storm's arsenal, and that's the storm surge. Now, the storm surge is an abnormal rise in coastal waters caused by winds of a hurricane or a tropical storm. In August of 2017, Hurricane Harvey created a storm surge of up to 12 feet high. It hit poor Aransas and western Aransas County. Now in the U.S., the highest storm surge ever recorded happened in August of 2005, and that was during Hurricane Katrina. The greatest threat to life comes from the storm surge. That's right, and the second greatest threat is inland flooding. Harvey holds the record as the wettest tropical cyclone to hit the U.S. It dumped more than five feet of rain in Nederland, Texas. That's southeast of Beaumont. In the Houston area, about 30,000 people were displaced because of flooding. There were also nearly 17,000 high water rescues. Since 1970, nearly half of all deaths during tropical cyclones are caused by inland flooding. This is why all evacuation routes in the coastal bend head away from the coast. I'm Andy Lascano and we're here along the bayfront. You know, one of the best things to do when you're anticipating a hurricane is proper preparedness. And that's what the seawall does. It helps us prepare for the worst and in the meantime, in the process, protect as many people as possible. That's important, especially after a major storm hit this area years ago. Pictures of downtown Corpus Christi taken before 1941 show the bay used to come up all the way to Water Street. Back then, the waterfront had pavilions and piers where locals and tourists gathered for dances. But a hurricane in 1916 and then the deadly storm of 1919 pretty much destroyed all of downtown. So protecting downtown and the city became a top priority. The first line of defense against storms, the breakwater near the ship channel. Built in 1925, the breakwater was required by the federal government before the port of Corpus Christi could open. In 1938, voters passed two bonds, totaling nearly $1.8 million to fund the next line of defense, the seawall. Crews built the seawall 100 feet from the shoreline, then backfilled the space with dredge, adding nearly two complete city blocks along the bayfront. The initial design was just a straight wall of steel sheet and concrete, but civil engineers convinced officials to upgrade to the stair-step design we know today. The nearly 1,200 feet of seawall along with the two T-heads and an L-head was finished in 1941 at a cost of about $2.2 million, which today, today it would be about $47.5 million. Then in 1985, engineers determined the seawall needed repairs and voters approved a $4 million fix. The project also included construction of the barge dock and a marina but it didn't address all the problems. 13 years later, engineers noted more cracks along with severe corrosion and deteriorated pilings. And the money needed to repair the city's protective wall would once again go before voters. In November 2000, voters approved a one eighth cent sales tax increase. The sales tax increase was used to create the seawall fund. Seawall repairs began a year and a half later and wrapped up in 2006 at a total cost of about $43.4 million. The seawall fund still exists today and helps fund not just repairs, but upgrades and development 
Most recently, money from that fund has been used in the project to repair the water gardens. It's also funded upgrades to flood protection in the museum district. So these most recent repairs to the seawall, they're expected to last at least 50 years. Keep in mind now, the wall is battered by the elements on a daily basis, so it's going to be in need of constant maintenance and repair. For Coastal Bend History, I'm Andy Lascano. Have you prepared your hurricane disaster kit? Let's do a little test. Which of these items is a must for your disaster kit? You're watching Plan. Prepare, Survive, a Chris 6 News Hurricane Special, sponsored by Flint Hills Resources, Window World, and AEP Texas. The coastal bend is a beautiful slice of paradise, but that beauty comes at a cost even our most inland neighborhoods are susceptible to tropical troubles. Let's go back to the four main hazards in a tropical cyclone. Flooding. Inland neighborhoods are most at risk for flooding, rains, and rising rivers. Storm surge. Coastal neighborhoods will need to prepare for rising waters that could flood neighborhoods along our coastal bays and waterways. All neighborhoods also face the threat of tornadoes that form in the rotating bands in a tropical system. They can create a spin in the atmosphere. While these are usually weak and short-lived, they can be destructive and even deadly. Extreme winds are the worst in the eye wall of the storm, but damaging winds can still extend several miles from the center of the storm. So here's some homework for you. Do you live in a flood zone? Do you know your evacuation route? Your insurance agent? Do you have enough coverage? Do you have a written family hurricane plan? If you can't answer these questions, you're not ready for hurricane season, but don't worry. If you need some homework help, scan the QR code on the screen or head to the Hurricane Center on our website. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Lorenzo here in Hebronville, part of Jim Hogg County. Last year, Tropical Storm Harold was right overhead, but this county wasn't warned. We ask why. Jim Hogg County right there. Everything kind of shifted north with, with watches and warnings. But despite Tropical Storm Harold going through Jim Hogg County last August, the National Weather Service office in Brownsville didn't issue a tropical storm warning for the area. I spoke with Michael Buchanan, the meteorologist in charge, who said the storm didn't meet the criteria when it was over Jim Hogg County. The wind speed probabilities for Jim Hogg County were extremely low for tropical storm force winds. And in hindsight, when we looked at the observations, um, it actually verified the non-warning because the, they never received sustained tropical storm force winds in Jim Hawk County. He says it was on the fence, but residents we spoke to in Hepburnville say the tropical storm wasn't even a memorable event. Jonah Salinas has been living in the area for about six years. He says he hasn't experienced anything out of the ordinary during any hurricane season. Rain, maybe. Same thing per usual in Hepburnville, but nothing super different or hurricane-y, I guess you would say. Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, hurricane. -y. Well, if anything, the hurricane season may even be welcomed for some regions inland. We're in a pretty bad drought, so a lot of times hurricanes are part of the natural climatology down here that the rainfall is sometimes beneficial. Notice he said sometimes, though. Buchanan says Jim Hogg County is still prone to certain threats, including heavy rainfall. The winds, too, and also tornadoes. Now, just keep in mind, folks, experts do say it's always important to be prepared no matter what, because like we saw last year with Tropical Storm Harold, Mother Nature may choose to change her course. Reporting from Hebronville, I'm Michelle Lorenzo, Chris 6 News. There's a common phrase you hear every year as we approach the start of hurricane season. It's time to get your hurricane kit ready. Getting that kit ready doesn't have to be stressful. Taylor Alanis and Javier Guerra are taking us shopping for some of the basic items you'll want in your kit. Hey everyone, it's Taylor Alanis. And I'm Javier Guerra. And we're here at the HEB on Saratoga. We're here to make sure that you're prepared for hurricane season and we're gonna get some of our favorite items for a hurricane kit. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. The first thing you're gonna need are some batteries. Make sure you have enough of them. Something we tend to see fly off the shelves during an emergency is water. So the next time you're at the store, grab a few paces. You never know if you'll be without power and for how long. Make sure you have some flashlights with you. 
In case of an emergency, make sure that you have all of your prescription medication ready to go. Also, pick up some over-the-counter medication. Always make sure that you have a first aid kit with you too. In case of a power outage, you're going to want to grab foods you don't necessarily have to heat up, like canned vegetables, maybe some Chef Boyardee, Spam, something quick and simple, protein and snack bars. Also, make sure to get a power bank in case there is a power outage. This is a way to charge your phone. Your fridge will keep your items cool for a while, but just in case, grab a cooler. You can also grab a tumbler and put ice in here, and that'll help prevent it from melting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you get everything? Yes. See hey guys, it's always good to be prepared because the last thing you want to do is be here when the lines are long and the shelves are empty. Yeah, that's right. And make sure that you have your hurricane kit ready to go if there's an emergency. We'll see y'all later. See you guys. When Tropical Storm Harold hit us last year, some CCISD parents felt the district didn't have a plan of action. So we went to the district and got some answers. Do you think they said, A, it's the parents' fault, B, we had a communication breakdown, or C, we need more information from parents. You're watching Plan, Prepare, Survive, a Chris 6 News Hurricane Special, sponsored by Flint Hills Resources, Window World, and AEP Texas. When a storm threatens a coastal bend, it can disrupt our daily routine especially for families with children. Do you send your kids to school or keep them home? Well, class is in session with a Ron Hammy. If something happens, it won't be for lack of planning because being prepared is, is part of what we want to do. Tropical Storm Harold left little time for decision making. As the storm neared the coastal bend, Corpus Christi Independent School District decided on a two hour delay. Confused and frustrated by the decision, some parents questioned whether CCISD was ready. It was very like last minute because a lot of this stuff comes through early in the morning. It doesn't allow parents enough time to prepare. Leanne Libby, director of communications for the district, says they have a big playbook for these scenarios. It starts with an automated message to families. They'll also post on their social media pages and give that information to us for broadcast. New this year, this section of the CCISD website now details how they make their decisions in these weather events. We continually emphasize throughout the year how important it is to keep your contact information up to date. If CCISD deems it safe, school will remain open to support students and their families. We have many, many of our parents and our guardians who work, and their workplaces are not necessarily going to be shut down, and so they rely on us. Secondly, our district has such a high need that we qualify for free breakfast and lunch for all students, regardless of ability to pay. Third, for some of our students, unfortunately, school is the safest environment for them. So what happens when a larger system, a hurricane, rolls into town? You end up looking drenched like this guy. CCISD's hurricane planning is already in place. It begins well before hurricane season and it gets updated every year. In the event facilities and operations has to do something, we've got all their information here what their responsibilities are. Chief Kirby Warnke of CCISD Police Department shows me the hurricane planning manual that breaks down the responsibilities of every CCISD department. Those tasks are broken down on a schedule. 72 hours out, we start doing things like if there's any debris, any brush that's been trimmed, we clear it all out, something that we may not even think about. Tennis courts have the nets that try to prevent the wind from coming in. We have to remove all that. The superintendent ultimately makes the call to have school start on time, delay, or be canceled. When it comes to a larger storm, Warren Key says they're assisted by the Emergency Operations Center. There's a plan for evacuations. In agreement with the city, CCISD buses will be used to help evacuations at one location, the Natatorium on Cabinet Parkway. So they come in on one side with RTA, they get processed, then they come out the other side, get on a CCISD bus, and we go to San Antonio or, or whatever shelter they're going to be at. In that case, police will secure each school campus and patrol them until winds reach 50 miles per hour. When that happens, Warnke says it's time to take shelter and buses will stop running. After a storm, CCISD police will be the first to check out if there's any damage to school property. Reporting in Corpus Christi, Aaron Hammy, Chris 6 News. Pop quiz. Do you know the difference between a watch and a warning? Here's an easy way to remember. A pancake watch means the ingredients are present for pancakes, but we're still watching to see if the recipe comes together. On the other hand, a pancake warning means the pancakes are ready and are about to be served.
The Gulf of Mexico is roughly 900 miles wide. And an average hurricane is about one third of that. This is why storms that form in the Gulf don't give us a whole lot of time to prepare. And with warm water temperatures, we tend to see more rapid intensification. And that's when a tropical cyclone's winds increase by 35 miles per hour in 24 hours. Plus storms like Peril and Hurricane Nicholas back in 2021, they had sudden changes in their tracks. In the case of both storms, that meant the center redeveloped closer to the coastal bend. And there could be little time to prepare for the next storm. When tropical trouble threatens, keep up with the forecast for any changes, small ships the forecast can mean big changes in the impacts that we feel here in the coastal bend. Here are the names for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Tracking storms isn't all about technology. You also need boots on the ground. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can help by being our neighborhood eyes and ears. You're watching Plan, Prepare, Survive. A Chris 6 News Hurricane Special, sponsored by Flint Hills Resources, Window World, and AEP Texas. You can count on your Chris 6 weather experts and your neighborhood news reporters to keep you informed this hurricane season, but you can also do your part to help. Our Coastal Bend Weather Watchers group is a place where you can share what's happening in your neighborhood. Many of your neighbors are already sharing what they find. We also share those findings with the National Weather Service. You can join the group. Just look for us on Facebook. Together, we can plan, prepare, and survive the next storm. It's not a question of if we'll have a storm, it's a matter of when. Thank you so much for joining us for this special hurricane program, and thank you for choosing Chris 6 News. Plan, prepare, survive. A Chris 6 News hurricane special is a presentation of Chris 6 News, sponsored by Flint Hills Resources, Window World, and AEP Texas.